Welcome to MongoDB.LocalNYC, where data dreams become a reality. Join John Furrier as he speaks with industry experts and thought leaders who will share their insights and best practices in data management, security, and deployment, all from the Big Apple on the Cube, the leader in live and emerging high-tech coverage. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's live coverage here in New York City from MongoDB. It used to be called World, not, not Local is what it's called now. MongoDB doing, not the annual tournament, annual kind of like conference. It is like a tournament of champions of developers all around the world and they're doing a multi-city tour. They're kicking it off in New York City where the biggest event is. You know, we've seen this in New York City with AWS Summit. A lot of local talent comes in, this is the kickoff of a multi-city tour from MongoDB, it's theCUBE's live coverage. This is their flagship event. We're kicking it off with Trevor Marshall, the CTO at a company called Current. Trevor, great to have you on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks kicking for off coming off MongoDB. Absolutely, no, I appreciate it. So talk about the company. Before we get into the conversation about developers and the whole focus around where we are today, talk about your company, how, how long it's been around, where are you guys at in the progress, and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going on eight years. Literally this week, is, it marks eight years of incorporation of, uh, of, of the company. Um, but we're a FinTech based here in New York. Um, we build banking services for millions of Americans. We're not a bank ourselves. We work with banks to offer checking accounts, savings accounts, all sorts of things, um, really to improve financial outcomes for our members. How many employees do you guys have? We've got 160 based here in New York, and um, yeah, we're, we're all in the office. Well-funded, multiple rounds of funding, yeah. private, not yet public. Yep, yep, Little exactly. markets closed, but still doing great. Yes, yeah, no, it's uh, You're nice. the CTO, so what do you do there? You're like, oversee the roadmap, make sure you get the right tech. What's your role? Yeah, I mean, I spend a lot of time thinking through how we're using technology to really deliver the value to our, to our members. Um, you know, one of the, the differentiations about how we came into the space was we really approached consumer banking from a technology perspective. We decided to take on a lot of sort of the financial stack and do that ourselves and really make that our core competency. So as a result, we've really created a technology moat around the products that we offer yeah. and a lot of my role as CTO at Current is ensuring that we're playing into that advantage yeah. and pushing what we can build a lot further to, yeah. to like bring that to customers. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of coverage on theCUBE about the modern, the modernization of the digital transformation, all that kind of cliche stuff, but it's kind of happening on the business side. You're seeing next-gen cloud coming. Yeah. You're seeing a lot more agility in terms of developer-led activity. You know, MongoDB database is now a data platform, and you start to see that organic evolution of some of the developers who, by the way, just can just get into Mongo. We, we're a customer, even theCUBE. We have our own you know, Mongo instances all over, the, all over AWS. And then it grows, and so like, they're having this huge moment where developers are now driving the standards because the apps themselves are, is yeah. the company. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, like, uh, you know, in, especially in financial services where there is a lot of this transformation, there's a huge advantage of just being cloud native. So since the beginning, we've been building our product and our technology in a way that can scale. Um, yeah. And for Mongo in particular, we've been working with Atlas for many, many years, um, fairly early Atlas yeah. customers. Um, and for us, what that gives us is the flexibility to not think too much about how, how big we need to get based on like, the transaction volume, the number of customers. Um, and so that sort of push button scale, once we did quite a lot of work to, <laughs> to get ourselves set up to, to be able to do that, has given us a tremendous yeah. advantage from a, you know, a cost and efficiency advantage, just in performance advantage, and really being able to deliver with high reliability um, our, our Talk our about the speed, the speed aspect of com being competitive. I mean, financial service is highly competitive market. Um, getting that right feature, getting those developers focused and productive, yeah. and, and, and satisfied, frankly, building the apps and not constrained. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Share your thoughts on like that paradigm because I know you're living it. The rest of the mainstream, I call mainstream enterprise, is now like coming to realize that developers are the competitive advantage yeah, when no, the I, application is your business. A hundred percent. I think, uh, I mean, you can address that question in so many different ways. I think from Mongo's perspective in particular, they've always been really focused on developer flexibility. And, and for startups in particular, you're never going to get it right the first time. And when it comes to your data model, like all the way down to the data model, you need the flexibility yeah. there to change how you're indexing yeah. data, how you're aggregating data, how you're 
constructing this view that ultimately delivers a, a product that's never existed before. So having that flexibility built in natively, it, it's critical if you want to move quickly. You know, Trevor, I was geeking out with a buddy the other day, we were talking about large language, large LLMs, large language models. And then um, someone who wasn't as technical is like, I don't, I don't get it. I'm like, okay, language. That key word is language. SQL, structured query language. No SQL, no language. Document database stores documents, which has text, which is language. So like, we started getting into this riff of like, like databases have different use cases and like, a lot of this AI is set up perfectly for new kinds of data structures, whether it's NoSQL or object store. So you start to see a lot of people have all this data enrichment sitting around. Mm -hmm. But it's not like, there's no insights coming out of it from a new, from a new AI perspective. Yeah, they do insights, like I, got, I got dashboards, I can have some analytic tools. But a whole nother level of insights is emerging mm -hmm. in yeah. this whole AI wave. That is foundational models, LLMs. What's your take on that as you look at that landscape? What are some of these new insights? Um, well, I think one of the first things is you have to have, the precursor to doing any of that type of insight is making sure that you're, you have a, a data strategy that can actually work with those see, uh, machines, those, those, those concepts. And what's really important for us is that, and what we've been focused on is how do we make sure that we're creating this sort of homogenous data layer across all of the interactions that our customers have with us. And then you can start leaning into some of the amazing technology. You know, we're also here speaking with uh, Google Cloud, and, and they've done a lot of work in, in starting to productize and make available a lot of these advancements to companies like us, where we don't have to have all of the like very academic knowledge of how to construct these things, but still get yeah. the, the the benefits of them. And so it really starts with having that that strong data strategy of really thinking through how do you normalize data, how do you how do you make it available, and then how do you turn that into insights and and, and products. So we're very focused on that. It's a it's a big. Talk about your developers, program. your developers, the current developers. What's your value prop? How does MongoDB fit in? Uh, you know, we're here at their event. Yeah. Take us through that story. Yeah, absolutely. I think like to be an engineer at Current, like one of the amazing things is very quickly, on day one you're deploying services to production and we keep really this ethos of any developer can work across any code base um, within our company. And so as a result, you get an, an amazing amount of leverage as a developer. You're joining a company, you know, we have just under like 50 developers at <laughs> Current. And so every pull request you're opening, every change you're putting into production has the ability to improve the lives of millions of our, our, our members, and it's an extremely exciting um, sort of journey that you Yeah, and Atlas, is, you mentioned you're a user of Atlas, it's been around for a while. It took them a couple years to build that, and, and I always, and I remember Mongo, I've been following it since they've been called 10 Gen. Um, Mongo will never scale. They're doing mission critical workloads, so they just keep proving all the, the, the skeptics wrong. But having a data platform, because it's turning into a data platform. I mean, it's not just database. They got search, they got time series, they have a lot of, they have global. What, is, what does that mean for, for your productivity? Because you have all those developers. You need to have good search, you need to have good tools. It's yeah. not a point solution. Uh, for us, I mean, like the biggest thing that we get with Atlas and Mongo generally is just reliability. And when we're talking to our account managers, it's like, yeah, the, the features are nice, like adding all yeah. these additional things. But for us, we want uptime, we want query performance. We just want the, 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 the nuts and bolts, all the block and tackling to be something that's just done and constantly improved. And so that's one of the advantages of working with a hosted solution like this where you've got people who are focused full time on making this thing more reliable, more performant, and we get the advantage of that. Yeah. And that's really what we're looking for. Talk about your session coming up with Google. You mentioned them earlier in the conversation. Um, they got Vertex, they're doing some good stuff. I'm going to interview Steve Urban coming on a, a little bit later. A um, lot of progress. I mean, I don't think Google gets a lot of credit for the AI shots that they have. They've had it a lot. I mean, I'm, they're in my backyard. I know Google really well. You got a session with them. What's that session about? What are you going to be talking about? What's on your What's on your uh, agenda? Yeah, we're we're going to keep it pretty open. But in general, we're going to be talking about how we've managed to build this, you know, consumer banking technology just with cloud native, you know, technology. Um, and that's going to be, you know, it's, it's it's something I talk about quite a lot. It's something that that's that's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, no. And the I'm highlights excited. of that talk will be what. Uh, the just, methodology, yeah, the methodology, tech you use. Yeah, the, the way that we're leaning into our, our technical advantage, yeah. um, how we deliver products and services. Yeah, yeah so all, all the good stuff. You know, I wish I was 25 again. I always say that on theCUBE because if you think about what you just said, the ability to get on the cloud native and take advantage of the hyperscale's assets 
if you're an entrepreneur, or you're a developer, the ability to get product market fit is one hackathon away for getting some traction, but then you can also go deep. Take us through that phenomenon, because this is like, I mean, it sounds cliche to say it's a new phenomenon, but it's really the cloud, 10 past decade, you start to see that SaaS, okay, you have the cloud. Now you have cloud and a lot more refactoring and opportunities to do new things. Yeah, I think the key thing is like, we've done a ton of experimentation, we've done a ton of products that we've put out, and then pulled back. You need to have that flexibility of trying things. Yeah. And if you don't, if you can't try it, you don't know what will work. And as a result, we're able to find yeah. Uh, just incremental changes and then major changes. Like we can introduce yeah. huge features we can, and we can easily pull yeah. them back. So I think that ability to be flexible, nimble, yeah. like all of these things are, are what allows us to get to that product market fit. And as a manager, the mindset is key to let people know, look at, try stuff, but, but don't get dogmatic. Don't, don't fall in love with your idea if it doesn't work initially. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got to pull it back. I mean, that, that's, that could be a challenge too, dealing no, with, for sure. you it's know. It's easy, yeah, sunk cost fallacy, all that good stuff. But uh, <laughs> I think we're, we're pretty good at understanding what are the key drivers yeah. of our business, yeah. how does technology play into that, yeah. and, and really what's the right strategy for us to, to, awesome. to pursue with our product. Really appreciate you coming on. For the final word, share with the audience um, what you think about where we are now with MongoDB, obviously here talking about data platform. But as an industry, where are we at? Um, where do you see it going? A lot of technical innovation coming together. You got surge of next-gen cloud. You got really this AI wave, which is you know, super hyped up, but it's got some legit legs. Mm -hmm. um, the agility of developers now leading the charge, setting the standards. Yeah. How do you see the next five years plus playing out? What's your vision? Yeah, well you opened with those, the comment around transformation. I think a lot of the industries that haven't adopted cloud technologies are going to be forced into that within the next yeah. five years because the, the incremental speed that you get by working in this space will just dominate product. Yeah. And ultimately, you can have the biggest marketing budget in the world, you can have you know, a, a great brand, but if the product is much better, <laughs> that's just going to erode, yeah. that, that's the real alpha. So I think you know, that, that transformation, especially in financial services where, yeah. where we play, is going to accelerate to its, its sort of inevitable awesome. conclusion. Awesome, final one more question since you're here. What's the coolest thing you're working on right now? Um, I'm really excited about a credit building product that we're putting out, so the ability for our, our members to grow um, their credit scores. We'll be talking a lot more about that over the coming weeks as, as we start right. to roll out. Trevor Marshall, public. CTO Curran here, kicking off MongoDB.local New York City. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We'll be back, live coverage all day. We got wall-to-wall -wall interviews coming up. We got the CEO coming on, CTO of MongoDB. We got two analyst panels. Stay with us throughout the day. We'll be here, cube.net, siliconangle.com for all the stories. We'll be right back.